it's been asked and answered. Vaccines don't cause autism. I mean, about 20% of children with autism will regress between often the first and second birthday. So statistically, it has to happen where some children will get a vaccine, they will have been fine, they get the vaccine, then they're not fine anymore. I have a friend who their child had a vaccine and then the child was diagnosed with autism. What's your response to that? Yeah, vaccines don't prevent autism. There are going to be thousands of children who, who, after they get vaccines, could develop all the things that children typically develop in the first few years of life. Vaccines only prevent vaccine preventable disease. So, so I think when the parent can reasonably ask the question, my child was fine, they got a vaccine, now they're not fine. Could the vaccine have done it? Perfectly reasonable question. The good news is it's an answerable question. So you can do a scientific study to look at whether or not the rate of autism is greater in a vaccinated versus unvaccinated group. I mean, the original hypothesis that measles, mumps, rubella vaccine caused autism, 17 studies have now looked at that question. And vaccines, the MMR vaccine doesn't cause autism, but also doesn't prevent autism. So your child could get the MMR vaccine and still get autism. You can never really say MMR doesn't cause autism, but frankly, when you get in front of the media, you better get used to saying it because otherwise people hear a door being left open when a door shouldn't be left mm -hmm. open. Right. I mean, you can't prove that Coca-Cola doesn't cause autism either, but we just don't happen to be having that particular fight yet. Um, so you know, you're sort of, you you're like. in a debate. <laughs> Someone's going to tweet that. You're in a debate, and, you know, you got to fight unfair. I it's think, a debate. I think you can fairly say that after scientists looked and looked and looked throughout the world everywhere and didn't find it, it's probably not there. It's not, yeah. we're not in a situation where it hasn't been looked at. See, so I wouldn't even say probably not there. I would just say not okay. there. You leave that door open and people run through it. Wondering, sir, what you think about some of the controversies and concerns that Americans have over vaccines, linking them to autism, uh, being afraid, essentially, of, of what the of side effects of vaccines could be. Yes, well, you know, first thing I have to say is that, uh, as in many other instances, there is an awful lot of false information on the Internet. A lot of rumors, a lot of, uh, of uh, ideas being retailed that have no basis in fact. Now, just to take the autism issue, uh, this came up uh, because of an article written by a, a British physician in a prominent medical journal. And uh, th so this idea that there was a relationship between vaccines and autism uh, began to be spread and people began to believe it. Okay, well, it turns out at the end of the day that the article that was written was based on fraudulent data. And that physician has been, in effect, uh, disbarred. His license has been taken away in Great Britain. Uh, so uh, the whole idea was false to begin with. And uh, abundant studies have been done expensive studies have been done to disprove what was uh, in uh, what was a fraudulent idea and there is absolutely no reason and no evidence indeed the evidence is against the idea that vaccines ca cause autism nevertheless there are still people who believe it and are retailing that idea and so that that goes back to um, uh, a, uh, a, a quotation um, uh, from, um, I think it's from uh, Jonathan Swift, who said that lies run fast and truth comes limping after. Since there's no evidence that DTAP or Tdap don't cause autism, you can't yet say that vaccines do not cause autism, correct? I cannot say that as a, uh, as a scientist or a logician, but I can say as a physician that no, they do not cause autism. Okay, so what you're saying is as a physician or logician, then you, you couldn't say vaccines do not, you, you, you could not say vaccines do not cause autism. Um, but as a pediatrician, you're saying that you would say that to a parent because you want to make sure they get the vaccine, is that right? 
You know, I can't be sure that DTAP doesn't cause leprosy. That doesn't mean that that stops me from using a DTAP vaccine. Are, are people claiming that D DTAP has caused leprosy? Uh, I, Are you aware I, of any such complaints? I'm not aware of any such complaints, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it on the web one of these days. Okay, but, but, but people have made enough complaints about DTAP, Tdap causing autism that the Institute of Medicine at the commission of HHS thought it was serious enough to do a scientific review, correct? Yes. Okay. If you don't know whether DTAP or Tdap cause autism, shouldn't you wait until you do know, until you have the science to support it, to then say that vaccines do not cause autism? Do I wait? No, I do not wait because I have to take into account the health of the child. And, and so for that reason, you're okay with telling the parent that DTAP, Tdap does not cause autism even though the science isn't there yet to support that claim? Absolutely. I, okay. I'm also willing to tell them it doesn't cause leprosy. Okay. I, I, again, did the, did the IOM review whether DTAP caused leprosy? No. Okay. When you get in front of the media, you better get used to saying it because otherwise people hear a door being left open when a door shouldn't be left mm -hmm. open. Dr. Hotez, yesterday our Twitter question of the day was we asked whether or not people thought the government should be able to force you to vaccinate your children. It was We had a stunning response, far more responses than we ever get. And essentially the gist of the critics was that why should you care if I don't get my kid vaccinated, if you get your kid vaccinated? Uh, we're, we're trying to keep our opinions out of this, but how would you respond to that? Uh, I, I'm of the opinion that uh, we should not allow unvaccinated children uh, into our schools. I think that that's it's too much. It's too dangerous to the other uh, children uh, in the school. Uh, you know, people talk about this as a civil liberties issue. Uh, I flipped that around the other way. Well, you know, when Thomas Jefferson wrote, wrote the uh, Declaration of Independence, he talked about right to uh, liberty and happiness. And uh, and the mo mothers and parents of children now uh, in these affected counties uh, can't go outside. They have their rights deprived us. But aside from safety complaints and people arguing about rights uh, to not have their child vaccinated, I want to point out a moral uh, stance that I don't think has gotten enough attention. And that is that every child has the right to be vaccinated. We keep talking about parents' rights to say yes or no and to avoid mandates or requirements or uh, do what they choose to do. But a child can't protect themselves against measles or the flu. A child with an immune compromising disease can't do anything unless other children are vaccinated. And someone has to speak up and say, well, what about the kids? Don't they have any rights? In many international agreements that the U.S. has signed, we say children have the right to health care, to have their welfare protected. Most religions would certainly argue that it's supremely important to protect the interests and the good of children, that someone has to do that, and that's what parental responsibilities are. But if the parents won't do it, I think it's the responsibility of the state, of the government, to do it. Let's stop talking about the rights of parents. Let's start talking about the rights of kids. If you're a child, it's assumed that your parents represent your best interests, and that's not always true. And when it's not true, as is true in this case, where parents have, say, a false belief that vaccines cause autism and they don't want to vaccinate their child, who do those children go to? And I think the answer is they go to the state. So we can certainly go further than school immunization mandates. For example, France and Italy have criminal laws for certain vaccines, and it would be almost certainly constitution to help them here. Sending a, basically police to enforce, mm -hmm. enforce vaccination can in some communities backfire. It certainly isn't easy on anyone. Mm -hmm. So it's not something done easily. It can be done, but it's just not done easily.